Hey guys, welcome back to the Whimsical Workshop. It is that time to start our block mania block for May. The theme for May was graduate and the colors we were given were red, white, and blue. And so I'm gonna go ahead and start building our little block for this month, but I'm not gonna share the block with you till the end. I'm gonna do this kind of as a spoiler, though you will see parts of it as we build it. Um, first is the degree because every uh puppy or every <laughs> the first thing we're going to build is the degree because every graduate gets a degree and this is the first block that we've done for the series with lettering so the first tip i can give you is anytime you see words in a quilt block is to make sure when you trace it onto the fusible web it is the reverse mirror image not um you should not be able to read it going forward that is the best and easiest way to know you have your templates going the right way. So what I'm going to do is I have my placement drawing underneath on an ironing mat. I have my Apple Fuse mat on top. Um, I'm using white for the background of the diploma and I'm just going to iron it right down onto my Apple Fuse sheet. It is light enough, thankfully, that I can see right through to where my letters are. So then I have all my letters prepared. We're using Hot Fix Adhesive this month. And uh, we're going to go ahead and position these letters down. And you can see using a placement drawing is in a um, Eplifuse pressing sheet really makes this job easier. Um, I've been getting into doing a lot more drawing again in my life and lettering. And I thought this would be really fun to kind of carry it over into this block and create some hand lettering. So these are actually just, this is not a font. This is me writing the words out in a fun and whimsical way to set up our block. So when I was given the theme grad, I was trying to think of what could be a good animal for graduation. So if you go back and look in the last nine months, uh, we've had an animal, one of our whimsical characters for each block. And I wanted to carry that through into this block. And so for this month, we decided to celebrate the newest member of our team and our family, our sweet doodles. If you haven't seen the video, um, I posted a video of two months ago, because I think we've had her now two, two and a half months. And it is, she is a great Pyrenees puppy that we have rescued from Atlanta. And she is our morale officer around here. She has truly brought a lot of happiness and love into our house. And so I thought for super grad, we were gonna do a puppy graduating from obedience school. That being said, our sweet little girl has not started her obedience school yet. Um, that will be next month. Um, she is five and a half months old. I will try to put a little clip of her at the end of this video so you can see how much she has grown from the first video because in the first video I actually put her up on the um, cutting table and shot her that way and she is so big now we can get her to she can stand on her hind legs and just look at you in the camera on the cutting table. Um, we're trying not to have her jump and we don't want to confuse her so I haven't trained her to jump on my cutting table. But every once in a while she just pops on up here just to see what the heck is going on in the um, studio. So we're almost done here with the degree. And you can see placement drawings are extremely important when it comes to positioning stuff that really does make life easier. Um, and if you buy any of our applet, fusible applique patterns, they, if they are complex, they do have a placement drawing in them. So as you can see, I've got the frame on the diploma, and now we're just going to drop this guy in. And don't worry about if you have these little frayed threads. Um, we can trim those off afterwards. It's not a big deal. It just depends on the fabric you use. So there is our super grad diploma with our little symbol, our little ribbon. Make sure it's authentic and real. All right, so now on to the main star of this month's block. And that is our graduate. So there's the degree. Well, these are with the free pattern. You can download um, the pattern and the placement drawings are there. So now we're going to build our graduate. So that is going to be this sweet puppy. Now our puppy is all white. 
but I wanted to add a little bit of color to this guy. So technically this is what our puppy would look like if she was outside and rolling around in the dirt. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead, we'll build the body and the belly first. And then we're going to build the eyes second as we do every month. And then this month I'm gonna hop over and I'm gonna show you about sewing this on my new Bernina 570. Um, I've been working on this machine now for a couple of months. It is wonderful to sew on, um, but I do wanna talk a little bit about, you know, hey, going from a sewing machine that you've been sewing on for 20 years to a brand new sewing machine. And there are some um, learning curves that you have to do no matter what machine you have, but I'm gonna talk about the one I got. Oh, these eyes do not wanna work for me today, so I'm gonna go ahead and iron this one down. And then we'll put this guy in. So, and again, this month I cut everything on my Cricut Maker. If you have any questions about a Cricut Maker and quilting, you can certainly leave them below. Um, I do get a lot of comments and questions about what kind of cutting machine to buy, and that really does depend on what you're looking for in a cutting machine. But I have to say, having the Cricut in the studio and using it to cut my appliques each month has been immensely helpful and way faster than drawing it and tracing it, well, tracing it and then pressing it and cutting it. It's like, it's really, really, so there's this little hat or whatever you call that thing. Uh, cap, graduate cap, there we go. So there's my graduate cap. This is the little tassel as I'm waiting for my eyes to cool before I peel them off. So you can see, as always, build everything in to uh, in sections, and then we're going to assemble it all on the background. And even if your pieces do not overlap in the drawing, I overlap it a little just to give myself something to work with. So there's this little tassel. We're gonna take the eyes off next. All right, now we can build the head with the eyes. And again, if you don't know where they go, just flip this back on the placement drawing. There are her big flappy ears. And there's his big, or her big poppy nose. She, this big nose, she loves to like lead with it and pop you with it. All right, so there she is. There's our little puppy. Put her, iron her all together. And then we're gonna put her graduate cap on her. <laughs> This is really when they start to come to life and they're just so, so cute. All right, so there she is. So we're just gonna give it a second to cool on the mat or not, depending on how patient you are. Always go with the lower level of pieces to pull up so that the upper ones all come off. There's her little tassel. So now, done with those and we're done with this. Let's build the whole block up so you can see what it looks like. So I've already gone ahead and sewn my background. This is the um, Color Weave Basic from Benertex and then a solid gray. And then I'm using my drawing, which you now can see. And I'm going to position these pieces on here. So this is really down here. And see here where this is, um, this is extending past one, it's coming on. I didn't iron it enough, so let's go ahead and iron that. I really did not give that enough heat. And make sure no matter what product you use that you do read the directions about how much heat to give it, what your iron setting should be, because some fusibles like this one takes a lot of heat. 
And others I use, it's like you, if your iron's too hot, it just disintegrates off the back. So you want to make sure you read the directions for whatever product you have. And then this corner that's going past it, I am just going to trim it up nice and even. So there is the degree. So this is all centered on the block. So I'm going to go ahead and take the block and fold it in half and give myself a center line. You know, it's been 25 years I've been doing fusible applique patterns and they still just really make my heart sing, mainly because they are unique. They're unique based on the artwork. So there is her little diploma. I want to make sure I keep it at the quarter inches the seam and then bring it up there. Now here's the little puppy. So I designed the puppy this month so it doesn't tuck under anything. It just sits right on top. That's why you don't have any more of the body, but you didn't need it. But what I am going to do is just overlap the, the doggy body onto the top of the diploma just a little. If you do too much, it'll look funny. So I'm just going to do it a little bit. So there is our soup grad. Hopefully when Miss Doodle starts her classes next month, she will be a super grad as well. Um, overall, she has been a super, super good puppy. Doing just puppy stuff, not a big chewer. Doesn't really destroy stuff, which is lovely. She is house trained, which is awesome. She doesn't like to come, but we're gonna work on that with her. She loves her walks. She loves to snuggle in the bed or sit on the couch with you. So the rule of no dog on the furniture went out the window pretty much 20 minutes after she walked in the door. And she's a very sweet and affectionate little pup. Well, I shouldn't say little. When we got her, she was 23 pounds and she is now 52 pounds and it's only been a couple of months. So she's five months old. She's got plenty of growing still to go. If you don't know what a great Pyrenees looks like, um, I, again, we'll try to get her in the video here at the end, but they are big, white, fluffy dogs. Uh, we had one before. We called her a doormat dog because that's what she did. She laid in front of the door to make sure she could keep track of her humans. As a working Pyrenees, they would be out guarding the flock and um, keeping an eye on the goats and the chickens and the sheep. Ours keeps an eye on the four of us to <laughs> make sure we don't wander too far from her. All right, and I added the little stars in here because I thought it just needed something. It was very red and red, white, and blue, and I know yellow wasn't one of the colors, but I thought, well, that pulls out the color in her little award, and it adds some interest. So there's a lot of um, blanket stitching on this guy, but again, should be pretty straightforward, and I'm going to show you that. I've got the camera set up over there for that. So there we go. There is our super red block. The one thing it's missing are the details. So I'm going to go ahead and get myself. Now this is all ironed. So I can use an iron off pen this month. Months passed, I've drawn everything and then I've ironed it and all of my pen lines disappear. This is a Frickson pen. Um, and you can do this beforehand by tracing the dotted lines on the templates onto the fusible web and then use a light box to trace it onto the fabric. But obviously if I'm the one who drew it, I can redraw here. Now, now you see her sweet, sweet doodle. She's got a smile. And then her little paws, the little dent in her paws. So there's that. And then we're going to stitch around here. And this is going to be a harder line to see until I sew it, but this is her little tassel. For his, her degree. Alright, so let's hop over to the sewing machine. I'm going to set that up and we will start stitch. Oh, wait, we got to pick our threads. Don't forget to pick your threads. So let me grab some threads to showcase and see what we like. Before we go sew, so we need to pick our threads. So I've pulled out my favorite Aurafil 50 and 40 weight threads, um, and I'm going to audition them. The blue was pretty easy, 
Uh, I only actually have one dark blue in my collection and that actually is perfect. So that will be for the little uh, seal on her diploma. I'm going to use this light pearl gray, which is my favorite gray. This one I have lots of spools of because this is my favorite gray to piece with as well as to finish off the little puppy. We've got our black and our white for black and white. I'll also use the... Um, I probably will use the black for the details, though I might pull out, I have a charcoal gray. I might use a charcoal gray for in between her toes. Uh, so then we've got the reds. We've got a burgundy and a, so these two are the same, and then this is more of a cherry red. So I pulled out a duller red, which is always a good choice for edge stitching if you don't want it to pop, because you can see it blends in both of those. And then here's the cherry red. I really couldn't go wrong with either, though the cherry red does pop off a little bit more, so I'm going to go with the quieter of the two reds. So we will go with this guy. And now the yellow. We've got this hot cheddar yellow here, so again we have a duller yellow that will disappear in. This is a brighter yellow. That really disappears. And then I had a lighter yellow and I wasn't sure what this would look like. It just is eh. So I actually think I'm gonna go with the brighter yellow because it really does just disappear into the stars. And um, since I've gotten the 570 and I've been working with different Aurifil thread baits for our Aura Philosophy lecture, I have learned that you can just use a neutral bobbin and not have to change your bobbin every single time and just use the um, change the colors on top. So I've actually been using this color, which is 2615, 50 weight in my bobbin for the last few projects that I have been blanket stitching the edges and it works wonderfully. I don't have to um, change the bobbin every single time because on these newer machines the bobbins are huge which is awesome because you don't have to change your bobbin when you're piecing but it's also if you wanted to have all these colors and bobbins I have to have a lot of bobbins spun up. So let's take these over, move over to the sewing machine, set up, and I'm going to do um, a tutorial on blanket stitching and edge stitching. It's been a while since we've covered this. And then I will try to capture little Miss Doodles, who is not very little, and introduce her to you guys again because it's been a while since you've seen her. So let's get sewing. I'm gonna show you how I do blanket stitch and how I do a hand embroidered stitch on my sewing machine. I start with an open toe foot, which is the 20 foot. I set my stitch to a triple stitch, which on the Bernina 570 is the number six stitch. And I set the stitch length to 1.25. Now I'm gonna go ahead, I've gotten my line drawn for my little graduate's tassel and I'm gonna start and I wanna start a little past where I want the stitch to end because this stitch will jump back about a 30 second of an inch and then go forward. So you don't want to start right at the end because it'll jump into the piece that you do not want the stitch to go into. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start and we're going to go slow. You want to have, if you have to adjust your speed on your machine, you certainly can. Um, I'm just going slow about half speed just so I can follow my drawn line which I know is a little bit hard to see here, but there it is. And we're just taking it down to the little graduate tassel. And now on this one, I've used black on top and I used a uh, gray on the bottom. So when I'm doing this triple stitch, the little bit of the gray is coming up and that actually helps the tassel pop off of the little graduate head. And now I'm just going around my little tassel. And there we go. So let me give you a close up of what this looks like. There we go. There's the hand embroidered tassel on the machine using the triple stitch. You can also see it here on the mouth and on his little toes. That is all of the uh, embroidery stitching that I'm doing on here. So now let's change over to our um, blanket stitch and I'm still gonna use the 20 foot. This is the secret to perfect blanket stitching and embroidery stitching is an open toe foot. It really, really helps um, you see what is going on. 
So let me get my threads changed and we'll be back and I'm gonna show you how to do the blanket stitch, especially all of these little pieces on these letters. All right, so now we're on to the letters. So these are small and thin and they are going to take some time. So what you wanna do is I always like hand crank my needle down so that I have it in the right position. And I take my first stitch, you can reverse stitch, you can knot your first stitch, however you wanna do it. And I'm gonna go very slow and I'm gonna go steady and I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna let the feed dogs feed the fabric through that'll give you more even stitch. And I'm just gonna take it and pivot and lift and pivot. And once you master the pivot and lift aspect of a blanket stitch, it suddenly becomes so much easier to do. Um, and it's just like quilting, you need to practice it. So we're gonna rotate, pivot. And just work our way around each letter. So, and that's how you blanket stitch. <laughs> that would be doodles. Doodles. That's how you do a blanket stitch. It's slow, steady, and even. And if you need to practice before you um, start, it's good to have some extra applique shapes, hearts, stars. Those are really nice shapes to practice on. And if in the beginning you can just match your thread to your fabric color. So if your stitches aren't quite even, you won't even see it. Uh, if you really want to do an impact or you really want it to stand out, that's when you'd use a contrasting thread. Um, when I first started doing appliques, I did all black thread on all our applique because I wanted the comic book look where you outline everything in heavy black. Um, I actually kind of still draw that way. But for quilting, I've decided I really like this soft outline that it just sort of blends with the fabric. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and finish my letters and then I'm gonna show you how to do this one of the stars and the little dot, the little dot here on her hat. Um, and then you'll be ready to go make your own super grad block. Okay, so we've got our gold thread, we've got everything else stitched and we are ready to uh, stitch around our stars. Once I get rid of this. Okay, so the last thing we need to do on our little block is to finish our stars. And I wanted to show you those because one, they're small, two, they have a pointy edge, um, and three, there's a lot of them. And you're gonna run into stars a lot. It doesn't matter what style quilting you do. There's, you know, folk art stars, modern stars, fun whimsical stars. So it's a nice shape to know how to do in practice. So I am going to start again with my open toe foot put down my presser foot, I've hand cranked my needle where I want it, and I'm going to stitch over the tip of that first star, just like that. Um, and you're going to go down, and when we get to these tips, you have to kind of like figure out your machine and your stitch length, and sometimes you need to hold your piece to kind of get the stitch to land where you want, because you can kind of hold this in place and the machine will keep trying to push it forward, but you're stronger than the machine. But you only want to do that on very few occasions when you're trying to hit a point, whether it be the V here, down here, and I'm going to show you that, or these points on the star. So I start at the tip, and I slowly stitch down, and when I get to this V, I want to have a stitch go this way, and I want to have a stitch go this way. I'm not trying to get one right on the center. If it happens to work, great, but I really don't worry about that, and no one's going to see it otherwise, unless you're trying to get like a blue ribbon win. So there we go. It hit, it hit right in the V, totally by accident. That was just luck on my part. So then I pivot on my needle, because I have my needle down, and I'm going to go again, and I'm stitching out to the edge, and when I get towards the tip, see, I just went right over that tip. I did not try to avoid it. I didn't try to go past it. I just went over it, I pivot, and then I go keep going down. And that will anchor that tip so it doesn't pop off. And it's counterintuitive. So now this time I'm not gonna hit that point. I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm gonna lift this up and I'm gonna jump over to the other star point. And it'll look just fine, I'll show you here at the end. And again, down over the point. Don't try to go down straight. You're gonna end up chewing up your point. It's just gonna make a mess. 
Um, I find just doing a small stitch right over the tip, it gives you a creative, kind of a little blunted edge on the star, but it will look much better than having the edge fray up or try to hit it and you just make a mess of your stitches. So again, right over the edge. And this time I held that fabric with this hand so that it would hit the tip of the point. Otherwise it was gonna go a little past it. So that's what I mean by holding this. And even though the machine wants to go, if you just hold it in place, I knew I would hit that point. That comes from practice. You wanna practice stitching on hearts and stars. Again, I always have a, a bunch of practice ones for students when they are learning how to do this. You don't wanna just, you know, cold turkey start on your piece. If you don't do a lot of blanket stitching, you always wanna warm up just like quilting. So then again, I'm pivoting. This time I got the V. It's, it's inconsistent and it's just based on your thing. So again, I'm holding the piece taut. You can kind of see it taut here, just so I can catch that point of that star. And then again, rotate and go down. And one last rotate and then we have got our star done. And knot or cut or however you want to do it on your machine and there we go there is the close-up of the stitching you can see here it did not hit the V but it doesn't look wrong or inconsistent here um, again didn't where's the one I hit the V there's the one where I hit the V but these are so tiny and from a distance you cannot see that. So there's no reason to sweat the small stuff. So that's how you do the stars. That's how you do the embroidery. So here she is all sewn and ready to go. This is um, for the May Block Mania blog hop. So make sure you check out our blog post at thewhimsicalworkshop.com where you can download this pattern for free. You can read all about how it was made and uh, check out all the links for all the other designers who participated in the theme for this month, which was graduate, and the colors were again red, white, and blue. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm gonna put a little clip here of Doodles and her reaction to the block. So there it is, our super grad with our sweet Doodles. Hopefully after she's taken her classes, she will be a super grad. Um, <laughs> she's a little tired, it's the only time we get her to stop. She has been a super wonderful puppy. She's been a great morale officer and she's keeping us all on our toes. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, make sure you like and subscribe. Make sure you check out the blog post for all of the blocks for Block Mania. And again, thank you for watching.